So you just bought a Jeep Cherokee. You're excited to go lift it and put some big tires on it, right? That's definitely the first mod that you should do, right? Wrong. I'm gonna tell you guys in this video everything that you should do before lifting it and putting big tires on it and doing what everybody else does, wastes all their money and uh, neglects the engine and the important things that keep this vehicle running. A lot of people like myself, when I bought this Jeep, it's a 2000 Cherokee Sport for those of you who don't know. Right away, I just put some tires on it and um, it was already lifted thankfully, but I would have lifted it anyway when I first got it. Well, I didn't do any research buying a Jeep, the problems that go along with owning a Jeep like this. So before you go spending all that money, breaking your bank account, buying a lift kit and tires and wheels and all that fun stuff, which is great, but you need to spend a lot of time and money under the engine and drivetrain before you go putting all those money into parts that essentially are great, but are useless if you're stuck on the side of the road. So the very first thing before you even go buy anything for your Jeep, go to AutoZone or Advance or whatever parts store you got and get yourself a breaker bar and just keep that in the Jeep at all times. I figured it's common sense, but that's something I just learned along the way when I was stuck on the side of the road and I thought to myself, damn, I really could use a breaker bar right now. Didn't have to call a tow truck and would have saved myself some money and time. And along with the breaker bar, you're gonna wanna make sure you have the right size socket to fit your lug nuts. These Jeeps are great, although they're 20 something years old, you always gotta keep in mind that you may break down. It's a good possibility. If you just bought a Jeep from a previous owner who took care of it, documented all the service, that's great. But a lot of the times, like me, when I bought this Jeep, I didn't really get that much information with it. So as I drove it, I encountered the problems, fix them as they go, and then you can have a file and basically keep track of all the maintenance and all the repairs that you've done to the Jeep so you know what to expect and you know what you've already replaced. It's not if, it's when you break down because it happens. These are all Jeeps, not just the XJ, any old Jeep, it's gonna break down eventually. Something's gonna go wrong with it, whether that be U-joints, um, shit, your exhaust falling off, that could happen, a flat tire. These things also tend to overheat as well, but we'll get to that later. Another thing that I like to keep in the back of my Jeep is a tool set. A uh, tool bag with an impact and a bunch of sockets and miscellaneous tools always helps. Zip ties as well, you always gotta keep zip ties on deck because those things come in very clutch and you always need zip ties. And I know a lot of this stuff probably sounds like common sense, right? But most people jump right into it and don't do these important things and then they're left stranded on the side of the road. Maybe it's just me, I don't know, but I'm gonna let you guys know these little tips and tricks. So hopefully it helps someone who just bought a Jeep and it prevents you from being left on the side of the road. So we got the tool bag, a breaker bar, and a socket that fits your lug nuts. This bad boy always comes in handy. It doesn't matter what brand you get, but a jump pack can go a long way. Sometimes you can just leave your key just in the right spot, and these ignitions can be a little tricky, and it could drain your battery. You could leave a light on, a dash cam on, anything that can draw power. This comes in clutch because you hook this bad boy up to your terminal, and you can get a quick jump anywhere. It's also fun when you're the hero and you can go rescue people in the Walmart parking lot. Keep one of these on deck, trust me. You'll thank me later. Also, these things are super easy to use. You can use them um, as a flashlight as well. So they're multi-purpose. This one's got a flashlight on it, depending on what brand you get. And yeah, basically just plugs right in there. You hook your jumper cables up to your terminals and boom, you can jump a dead battery, just like that. I think this one's a given, but I feel like I just threw it in this video, because why not? Um, oil, you guys always gotta have oil, especially with any 20-year-old Jeep. These Jeeps uh, specifically, they tend to leak. They're leaky vehicles. You got old gaskets, it's gonna leak somewhere. Luckily for me, this one doesn't leak. Um, I think it burns oil somewhere, but anyway. Always gotta keep some oil on deck, whatever weight you run, whatever time of the year it is. Good to keep track of your oil. I like to check my oil uh, once a week and it's just good peace of mind. Even if you don't do that much off-roading, I highly suggest you guys get yourself a rope. Literally any rope, this thing's not even fancy. It's got two clamps on it, it's a dirty old rope, but it's pulled out many vehicles and it's rescued me a few times as well. Now if you're balling, you can get yourself one of those kinetic energy ropes from Yankum and those work very well. I've seen those in person work. They're highly effective, but you don't need any of that fancy stuff. Just get yourself a rope. And on my Jeep, I have a receiver hitch. So I went in on Amazon and I bought one of these receiver hitch hooks. They just go in there, it locks on your receiver, and then you can put a rope or a clamp over there and tug anyone out or tug yourself out if you get stuck. Also, this kind of goes along with the oil too, but keep coolant in your car. Always keep coolant. These Jeeps can overheat. The old HVAC system in these Jeeps are terrible and they require a lot of maintenance. If you bought a Jeep that's already had a heater core and a whole new cooling system, congratulations, you won't have to deal with any of this. 
But if you have no idea what you bought, expect cooling issues and overheating because it just happens. I dealt with it and um, I'm still dealing with it. So I always keep some coolant in there just in case, especially on the hot summer days. So the first day you take your Jeep home, drain the oil, see what you got, do an oil change. Highly suggest that. I think that's a given as well, but a lot of people just don't do that. Change the oil, check the transmission fluid, check the coolant. You also want to service your differential as well. Pop that cover off. You're going to need to reseal it with some RTV, but it gets you a good idea on what you have um, for a rear end, get you familiar with the Jeep, and then you have peace of mind that you already changed it. It won't leak and you're good to go. The Jeep Cherokee came with two axles, the Chrysler 8 and a quarter and the Dana 35. The Dana 35 is notorious for being weak. It's trash. If you have that, I encourage you to swap it out with something stronger, maybe a Ford 8.8. .8. You can upgrade your brakes to rear disc instead of the garbage drum brakes on these that they come with. I still got to do that with this one. The Chrysler eight and a quarter is a pretty good axle. That's what I have on this Jeep. The Dana 35 is very weak. I wouldn't even throw 33s on that. Um, expect it to just explode. I've heard of it happening and a few of my buddies had it and they just completely destroyed their axle get that eight and a quarter or go do a swap or something but don't do anything to your tires or suspension until you get a solid axle the front dana 30 can handle bigger tires although it's not the best the 35 is the one in the rear terrible bad axle don't use it if you have an xj like this i can't stress enough buy mopar parts don't buy anything from the parts store autozone advance go straight to mopar get genuine OEM parts for these. Thank me later. Any sensor you get, literally anything you can, just try to get Mopar. You'll save yourself a lot of headaches in replacing things that you've already replaced. Even though it's more expensive, it's worth it in the long run and it'll save you a lot of time and stress. So one thing that I need to do on this Jeep still that I did on my other buddy's Jeep and improved its gas mileage, overall just healthiness of the motor. Change the map sensor. These things are cheap by the way. That's your map sensor. That's your TPS. So this sensor can get dirty and cause your Jeep to run like crap or get poor gas mileage. That's your IAC, comes off with two bolts, pop it out, clean it with some brake cleaner, put it back in. One really important thing that you need to do when you replace any type of sensor on this Jeep, you wanna disconnect your battery terminals and you wanna hold the positive and the negative together for a full minute. This resets the computer. It prevents you from having any false codes or ongoing issues with that same sensor you just replaced. Yeah, that's something I didn't learn um, until a few months ago actually when I replaced my buddy's TPS and map sensor. After I reset the computer, it ran brand new. These things are very simple. Sometimes just a computer reset is all they need to get back and running healthy. You might notice that I have a cold air intake on here. I don't recommend getting these. This was on the Jeep when I bought it. I believe they sell an intake system that goes into your uh, cowl over here. For now, this is what I have. It's okay, it sounds all right, but it really doesn't do anything. I wouldn't waste your money on it. This 2001 Cherokee has a coil pack system, but on other Jeeps, like a 1998, there's a distributor cap and rotor with plugs and wires. If you guys have that, change them, it won't hurt. So when you buy a used Jeep, you always wanna watch your gauges. And the most important gauges that you wanna pay attention to are the coolant temp and the oil pressure. The oil pressure on idle when it's cold, around 40. Although when it's hot, it can drop anywhere between 15 to 10 PSI. 10 PSI is a minimum, although you might be encountering an issue if you find yourself running at 10 PSI or anything lower than that. So I mentioned this in a lot of my other videos, one thing that I really think is an important investment when you get a Jeep, other than the motor, other than the axles, the drivetrain. You want a good drive shaft and a slip yoke eliminator because this gives you a less aggressive angle on your drive shaft, gives you a much smoother ride, and it's overall just better for the Jeep. You're not going through U-joints like crazy. Before I got the slip yoke eliminator, I was running a transfer case drop bracket, which are two little pucks that go between the cross member and the unibody right here where these bolts are. There's a little gap and uh, yeah, you wedge these little pucks in there, put the bolts back on. And that gives you a little better angle on your drive shaft. Well, in my case, I got the slip yoke eliminator kit, which relocates the slip yoke down to the axle side versus the transfer case side. That's the right way. That's what you're supposed to do when you do any lift to any Jeep. You need that slip yoke eliminator kit. If you luck out and your Jeep already has one when you buy it, great. But if you're starting from fresh, get that slip yoke eliminator kit. It's worth the money. You'll save yourself a lot of time replacing U-joints. A common problem when people buy a lifted Jeep or they lift a Jeep without doing all these preventative maintenance, they end up with a lot of problems with axle U-joints, drive shaft U-joints, 
if you lift a Jeep with stock axles and you put bigger tires on it, it's gonna put stress on your front end components. So you wanna upgrade those components before you do all that. So when you put the big tires on, it's ready to go and you won't have any issues. That's your sway bar. And a lot of people are gonna tell you, you don't need that. Well, I encourage you to keep that on. Your front sway bar is definitely there for a reason you, and you should keep it on unless you're going strictly off-road with these. That's just my opinion. So again, the Jeep Cherokee is a great vehicle. It's fun to mod, it looks really cool, super badass when you lift it and put big tires on it. But don't do any of that stuff until you put the maintenance, the hours, the time and money into the engine and things that matter that are gonna keep you on the road and keep you on the trails without having to take a trailer home because it sucks to ride home in a tow truck. You just feel super defeated. So in my opinion, those are the most important things to do when you go buy a used Jeep, especially an XJ like this one. Go through everything, work it out. Don't get frustrated with it because it's an old vehicle. It's gonna take some time. It takes a lot of time and money to get to the point where it's reliable, you can hop in it, go wherever you wanna go. But if you spend the money and you put the hours under the hood, you'll have yourself a very good, trusty, reliable, sturdy Jeep. It never ends with these, it really doesn't. I've had this one for almost four years now and I'm just constantly dumping money into it. So another thing, don't buy a Jeep if you don't wanna spend money on it. Unless you wanna spend more money to buy a Jeep that already has all those things done, then you won't have to do any of that and you'll have yourself a, a daily driver. But for most of us, like me, I don't have the money to go do that. A lot of these XJs are getting expensive. You can see these anywhere from five to $10,000, depending on the condition and what state you're in. This Jeep right here would probably sell on the market for close to seven, $8,000 for what I have in mods. Those are the first things you guys should buy when you go buy a Jeep. I appreciate you guys for watching. Drop down in the comments and let me know if I missed anything. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you guys on the next one.